The Cheap Model 1. I ran the same prompt through six different AI models and GPT 5.2 Low just beat Opus 4.5 for a code review. I needed a code audit on Yeeball, which is my multiplayer soccer game. So I had Opus write the perfect review prompt, about 52,000 tokens of instructions. And then I fed that exact same prompt to every major model. So check it out, Gemini went rogue. It started editing files when all I asked it was for a code review. But the real surprise was the model with the lowest reasoning effort found things that Opus 4.5 missed. Crazy, right? So GPT 5.2 Low caught an interesting issue with the way that sprites were rendered in my app. So for procedural tasks, you may not need to be reaching for that expensive thinking model if you just need some clarity. Let me show you what exactly happened. Code review handoff. First, let me review your current work documentation. I've created a comprehensive handoff review doc. This prompt will then uh, guide the reviewing agent to the core objective, what's included, Opus is so good. So I am had Opus orchestrate this. This only cost me about uh, 52,000 tokens. And now I'm going to have this handoff document and just switch this over to Gemini. Okay, so what's included? Full audit checklist for phases one through seven. Cool. So key areas of focus are here. The document also plainly marks what to ignore, planned features in plan, so they don't waste time auditing unbuilt features. This is crazy. <laughs> The power of having a smart model like that in your code base is massive. So we're going to test out Gemini 3 Flash. Uh, how do I prompt it? Let's see. So cool. Uh, please work on this. Gemini 3 Flash has a million token context window. This is going to be a really nice extensive review. And you can see cursors already put all of those things in here into to do lists. And it's working extremely fast with reading all these files very, very quickly. Whoa, does Gemini already finish? No way. This is moving fast. Okay. It's getting to work. Gemini 3 Flash is fast. But if you have Opus handing off the prompts to uh, Gemini 3 Flash, it's it's amazingly fast. Ooh, I've updated to-do list and the progress made. Okay. So would you like me to proceed by fixing or would you like me to start working on this animation thing? I have completed all to-dos now and I'm ready for the next task. It's interesting how Gemini 3 is kind of talking to itself out loud here. <laughs> Actually, looking at the handoff, it says you're tasked with conducting a thorough code review and work on this. I should probably fix the kick animation now since it's broken. So this is interesting. The Google Gemini Flash internal dialogue is sort of being exposed right now in Cursor because it's like, it could either be the system instructions from Cursor or Gemini's instructions to want to like really get the work done. But this document only outlines a code review task, right? So it says already marked my to do's is complete. OK, let's do this. I'll add a to do list. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So it just went to start fixing the stuff. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. <sighs> Let me reevaluate. OK, so I think it basically ended up it wanted to fix stuff, but I don't think it did anything. It's very ambitious at wanting to do things. This is really weird. I think I got into a funny state. Gemini 3 Flash High likes to write files. It already did this for me. Ah, Jesus. I can't trust you, Gemini 3 Flash, if you're going to be doing this to me. I just asked you to review the code. You were like, yo, bro, I got you. Don't worry. Oh, by the way, I like I did everything else for you, bro. Nah, bro, you need to chill right now. Gemini 3 Flash, I know you want to show off. I know this is your moment right now. A lot of people are getting your shine right now, but I need to pull back a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. It's a little too aggressive right now. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay. Yeah. So we see this is this is the this is what Gemini did. It just said, like, I'll update everything. And it's like, did you? Is it? Oh, I'm just gonna discard your work. Discard. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this audit with uh instead of Gemini Flash. Low key, I think I think Codex Max with smaller reasoning window might be interesting. So Codex Max, and then I'm just going to do low. I'm also going to actually, this is probably a good time to see if I can hand this off to um, Droid and see if it behaves a little bit differently. I'm really, really curious. Yeah. OK, so I got factory pulled up. We're going to give it that same task uh, of the code review handoff this one. OK, so we have Droid slash model. And then we're going to select flash. OK, I don't think I need a lot of reasoning effort because it kind of overthinks, to be honest. I'll do low. OK, so it's applying the new changes. We have flash low. OK, I'm curious to see how Gemini 3 flash low is going to work. 
the reason why I chose a lower reasoning level is, so this is something that Eric Provencher covers in the Rate Limited podcast. And he says that sometimes if you, the models with a high thinking can overthink. And I think I'm kind of seeing that in Cursor right now, because you see the models like, oh, I should then write the code now, right? I did the review, let's go write the code. Like, and it was just kind of fighting with itself. I'm just trying to remove that noise from its thinking <laughs> and just kind of be more procedural based. Yeah, so here's Droid. And the Droid already finished, dang. How did it finish so fast? That's kind of what's weird. I have completed the comprehensive code review already. Dang, did you review the code? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm also gonna just try a different model. I'm just really curious. This is what this is how I discovered the models are kind of funny. Uh, models, okay, so we're gonna try 5.2. We're gonna give it the same. We're gonna say low, and I'm gonna try this, right? Just trying to make it not overcomplicated. So this is low. We're gonna do droid again. So 5.2 high. Let's just see if there's any difference here. Um, and then we're gonna do droid again. We're just gonna compare, compare, my, <laughs> compare a lot of them. Um, and then we're gonna do codex max. GPT 5.2 low. We have GPT 5.2 high. And then now we're gonna do codex max high. And then slash model uh, droid just for cost. Cause I know people are trying to try different things for cost between Gemini pro and Gemini flash. What would be better if we just do flash on high? So Gemini three flash on high, cause this is what cursor is using. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. So let's go ahead and see here. And here we go. So I confirmed the project such as bun. Okay. Yes, I conducted a review. Specifically, I verified these things. Um, okay. And I had Opus generate this prompt. So this is code review handoff, and we're giving this one to the GPT 5.2 low, which is doing its thing. This is GPT 5.2 high. It's going to read the files. You can see the different lists here. And then this one is GPT 5.1 codex max. And this only generated a smaller to-do list. And then I think what we have to do now is just see if uh, Opus is going to do anything. Droid uh, slash model. And I'll do Opus like max maximum intelligence. What do we get for maximum intelligence? 2x the cost, right? Is it worth the 2x cost, right? Are you going to spend like the same amount of tokens eventually to get to the same place? Um, and just kind of compress time. I'm just really curious. Okay, so we have so far is... Codebase is an excellent health and deployable. Ghost features documented, but not built. So none found, all documented. And then security assessments. Um, okay, this looks cool. Um, undocumented features, goal celebration sync, lobby timeouts, maintenance mode, user XP fields, actual state sprite integrations. Better than documented, all five OpenAI characters have full rotations and running animations. The kick animations exist, but aren't triggered during gameplay. Uh-huh, that's what we gotta fix. Security concerns and the code base is deployable, yes. Okay, this is cool. I like Opus's review. Codex Max is still going and it's just reading files right now. So this is pretty good. And as far as low, low kind of did a similar thing here. So if you're using GPT 5.2 low, this is pretty good. This is actually falls on par to what Eric Provencher said that, that like GPT 5.2 low, <clears throat> is very similar to Opus 4.5 in some some cases here. So um, I might have to start reaching to GPT 5.2 low for a lot more types of things because of costs, but also thoroughness too, right? That's amazing. Wow. GPT 5.2 low. Okay. I see you. I see you. If you give it a good prompt, it cooks. Oh, wow. Frames are loaded. I like the details. These are really good details. Okay. This is pretty good. Compare that to Opus. Opus is kind of, it's basically the same. Is Opus is a little bit more succinct. It covered more uh, features here that I had in my document. Um, but for 5.2 low, for the price, Gemini 3 flash low. I was hoping you would do some more work here, but compared to like ranking all these right now, uh, it makes sense. Like GBT 3 flash low, Probably didn't meet the benchmarks anywhere. I mean, I don't see it anywhere in a lot of benchmarks. Gemini 3 flash high. I see why it's the default in cursor because it could get stuff done. I haven't checked how it compares to Haiku, to be honest. But as far as our winner here, I think it's GPT 5.2 low and Opus 4.5. Then it goes in terms of matter of cost.
GPT 5.2 low is nearly on par with 4.5 for this type of task where I have a very procedural document from Opus that's generated about like what specific things to do uh, to go review these different files. Opus 4.5 provide a little bit more detail as far as like the nuances and little details in my plan. It costs that much more though. Is it worth it? It depends, right? So um, something like this, I think I'm just going to fly with Opus because it's of the details, but 5.2 low, not bad. I would choose low over medium or high. It gets a little crazy with high. I think high is just still going. You can see we're just waiting for a while. It's going to be thinking. So Codex Max high. Okay. It did a pretty cool review here. No live badge. Hmm. This is an interesting call out. Active public testing, no live badge. Okay. And then auto start is client host only. This is a good catch. So just by looking at this, you already know it's live. So this is where GPT 5.1 Codex Max doesn't really get that. It's like, your document says live. And I'm literally just taking it literally. And it says it should be live. It needs to be live in here. I don't see live, you know? And like Opus 4.5 and all the Sonnet models are like, chill, bro. Like, isn't it obvious? Like, there's a countdown, there's a score, there's stuff happening. It's so that's the difference between some of these two models. And, you know, that's GPT 5.1 Codex Max. GPT 5.2 didn't really get that pedantic, as we can kind of see. It didn't call this out. But it's just interesting that I tried this prompt, the same prompt across all these models. And especially like, the levels of thinking too, and, and like what it chooses to hang on to and say, no, this is not correct. So it's really hard for me to kind of discern which one I should lean on. I think running both of them could be helpful, but if I were to just choose one, I think it's going to be Opus 4.5. It costs more, but I do always keep wanting to try these things to test them out. And I think uh, you get to learning from my experiments and, and cost here. So. <laughs> so for procedural tasks like audits, reviews, and checklists, the low reasoning is actually going to beat overthinking. And I want to let you in on the quick verdict here between all these different models. Gemini Flash, it's actually too aggressive. All I asked was for a code review and it just started writing files. And I can't be having that. Opus 4.5 is actually the smartest. It caught the little nuances, but you know, it costs quite a bit of money. GPT 5.2 low though, that was nearly on par with Opus 4.5 for this type of task at a fraction of the cost. So next time you need a code review, just try the cheap model first. All you have to do is just write a good prompt and give it low reasoning and see what happens. And look, this field is changing every single week. There's new models, new workflows, and all that crazy stuff. If you wanna figure out this stuff together, I'm doing live coding sessions on the weekends at Start My AI. It's completely free and all you have to do is just put your name on the list and I'll let you know when I'm streaming. It is your chance to code with me live and ask questions while we work through this stuff in real time. Drop in the comments which model you're using for code reviews. All right, let's keep cooking.